Let me start by welcoming you very warmly to the launch of Cooperation Africa. We appreciate the time you have taken up and the interest you have shown in this important initiative. There are many challenges that face Africa and Africans. Among them are the achievement of national peace and security, good governance, inclusive growth, development, and environmental sustainability. The initiative that Cooperation Africa is launching today will create or contribute to achieving inclusive growth and impact positively the lives of African youth and women in particular. Cooperatives allow small producers to improve their market position. They allow farmers to buy their inputs more cheaply and to sell their produce at better prices. They allow consumers to save together in credit unions and then to borrow, thereby accessing finance that might either not be available to them or only at very high cost. They allow those who might not be able to afford a home to gain access to one, provided they team up with others in housing associations. They also allow consumers to access cheap, good quality food, insurance, and other services. Finally, they allow workers to own and manage their own businesses as a democratic collective. In short, cooperatives facilitate inclusive growth and development. Getting access to finance is a problem for many businesses in Africa. And this initiative by Cooperation Africa, building a network of cooperative financing institutions will encourage women and young people to build cooperative businesses and provide themselves with secure livelihoods, thereby ending systemic underemployment and unemployment, a situation predicated or predicted rather to become acute if nothing is done to address it. Across the world, there are many examples of how cooperatives can and have had positive impact on people's livelihoods. In Asia, Indian farmers have one of the world's largest cooperatives in the Indian Farmers Fertilizer Cooperative. Dairy farmers operating under the Amul brand have enabled India to become the world's largest producer of milk. In Kerala state, the Urulungal Labor Contract Cooperative started by road and bridge construction laborers in 1925, has become a major builder of infrastructure in that state and is the world's second largest industrial and utilities cooperative. In Japan, farmers have contracts with consumer cooperatives that enables them to have price security and the consumers to have stable supply at affordable prices. In Europe, cooperatives mostly provide affordable finance through credit unions and good quality food at low prices through consumer retail cooperatives. African people have played a special role in the development of credit unions in England. Since it was Africans from the Caribbean who set up the first credit union in England in 1964. Of course, in Spain, there is a world famous Mondragon Cooperative Corporation, which started in 1956 and now comprises a network of around 100 interconnected cooperatives. In the intervening period, it has transformed the Basque region of Spain for the better 
and become the world's largest industrial and utilities cooperative with an annual turnover of around 12 billion euros, making it the world's largest cooperative union. In the USA, farmers make use of over 30,000 cooperatives to ensure that they can protect their interests, both as buyers and as sellers. Alongside these, a new wave of cooperatives, often led by people of African descent, has begun to emerge. Among them is Cooperative Home Care Associates, which provides home care for the elderly and was started by nurses who felt that they could do better for themselves if they organized their own employment agency to secure contracts. This cooperative is in the Bronx in New York and has been created and has been operating since 1985. Personally, I was a member of a consumer cooperative when I lived in Cleveland, Ohio, in the USA in the early 1980s. And having worked for the UN, I'm still a member of the United Nations Staff Credit Union, UNFCU. The history of cooperatives in Africa is checkered. Many started as state-supported agricultural produce purchasing organizations that flourished in the years immediately after independence. In Ghana, cooperatives were first introduced in 1928 by the colonial government in an attempt to improve the quality of cocoa for export. They were so successful that by 1960, the cooperatives were marketing almost 40% of the entire cocoa crop. Cooperatives fell on hard times, especially during the period of structural adjustment and have only recently begun to experience a renewal. There has been dynamic growth of credit unions in East Africa, especially in Kenya. The Kenyan credit union system, which specializes in lending for business, has capital reserves, many times that of the credit union system in England, which only lends for personal consumption. In the rest of Africa, cooperatives have tended to be small scale and operate mainly in the agricultural sector. But I'm sure that more cooperatives of all types, especially producer cooperatives in manufacturing, entertainment, financial services, and the tech sector of the economy would help to make Africa's development more dynamic, African-owned, and inclusive. It is for this reason that I'm happy to associate myself with this initiative. It has the potential to impact on the ability of those normally marginalized, women and youth, to acquire a stake in the expected high level of growth predicted for the African continent and the African economy in the decades ahead. I hope that you who are attending this launch today will join in this initiative. And I hope further that Cooperation Africa will grow in membership and in strength and deliver on all its mission objectives and create a cooperative Africa for the Africa we want. And I thank you for your kind attention.